For our next video here, what we're going to be talking about is carboxylic acids. Now, by definition, a carboxylic acid contains a carboxyl group. Now, what makes a carboxyl group is where you have your carbonyl, which we learned about in the last two lessons, which is C double bond to an O, and the other side you've got hydroxyl group, an OH. So you can think of it as being R, C, double bonded to an O. Now this would be like an aldehyde or a ketone. What makes carboxylic acid unique is where you attach it to an OH. So when we're naming carboxylic acid, the examples we're going to, the suffix is going to be oic acid. Now if you look on your priority list sheet, what you'll see is that carboxylic acids and esters, which is our next lesson, are always given the highest priority. So if we look at the examples here, what you'll see is we've got methanoic acid. It's methane because there's one carbon, also known as formic acid. You'll recognize the second one here where we've got two carbons attached to a double bonded OH. This is known as ethanoic acid, otherwise known as acetic acid or vinegar. If we were to draw this out, it would also look like this. So you get three carbons here, it's propanoic acid, four carbons, butanoic acid. What you'll notice is that there's no numbers here. The reason why is, by definition, a carboxylic acid has to go on the end. So if it has to go on above the end, by definition, that's spot one. So when we're naming it, it's same, the follow, same rules as always, where you name the parent alkene. Instead of having the E on the end, what you're going to put is a suffix oic acid. And by definition, that carbon there is carbon number one. The prefix rules are all the same as we've learned before. So in this example here, we've got a, at spot three, a methyl group. So it's three methyl butanoic acid. Right here, you count the longest chain. It doesn't matter whether you count along here or you count in a circle. Either way, it's going to be a four carbon chain. And at spot two, we've got an ethyl group. So two ethyl butanoic acid. Right here, what you'll see is we've got our ethanoic acid right here at spot, f and we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So you know it's going to be hept heptanoic acid. Now at spot five, we have an alcohol group. Now if we go back to our list of priorities here, what you're going to see is that under alcohol, which is right here, if it's an ending, it's an OL. In this particular case, though, you'll see carboxylic acid is higher on the list. As a result of that, alcohol is lower. So it's not going to be part of the suffix, it's going to be part of the prefixes. So we don't call it an all, we call it a hydroxy. So back to here. At spot five, we're going to have five hydroxy. So it's five hydroxy, or five hydroxyl, hexanoic acid. So if we go down a little bit further, it's going to ask us to draw two ethyl pentanoic acid. Penta means there's five carbons. So one, two, three, four, five. And at spot two, we're going to do an ethyl group. And here we're going to draw an ethanoic acid by doing O, OH. Now, this is considered a polar compound because it's got polar bonds all over the place between the carbon double bonded O, carbon the single bonded O, and the oxygen to the hydrogen. And as a result, there's a whole bunch of bonding that occurs in here. And because there's hydrogen bonding, you're going to have a higher boiling point than expected. They're also going to be more soluble in water than everything else because of the strong hydrogen bonding. Now, if you think about vinegar, you think about lemons, they're all going to have a sour taste to it. And that's because of the structure of the acidic group. 